Morning, church. It's Danny here. It's uh, 2.43 in the morning. And we're getting started. Before Pastor Brian takes off, I want to make sure we... Go ahead, Ernie. Because here we are, traveling to the motherland. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> Enjoying the beautiful scenery. We're on a train ride going to Pearson. Is that where we're going, Pastor? Pearson. Pearson Airport. Yep, we're going to Pearson. Next leg is a flight to Washington, D.C. See you guys there. London and getting ready to go to Toronto. So we're glad that you get to watch part of the video and see our trip. Woohoo! Oh, wait. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Kathy. Do What's your right? woohoo! Oh, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're on another train. Say hi, Ernie. And let's see, we got Jen and Riley. We got Christine Asher. We got a stranger in the back. So we got Pastor Jeff. We've got Christine, Kathy, and we've got Nick. Who's there? You go. Hey, he's hiding. And there's me. Look, there's Pastor doing a you know a photo bomb. Oh yeah, fix that hair, Pastor. We're on another train ride. Uh, this is probably about a half hour or so, and then. We'll be going to the airport, so we'll see you guys there. Hey everyone, we're sitting here at gate 90, 89, 88, something like that, getting ready to board a plane. So this is what's been going on. We were supposed to board at two. Then while we were in baggage claim, trying to get through baggage deal to detail, which took forever, we got halfway through and then we got a notification said we're delayed all the way to 2.30. Then we get through that, we get through security, we get through customs, we get all the way to the gate, we're like running pretty much. I mean, we're all sweating and everything like that. We get here and we just got a notification saying that uh, the flight's delayed till three o'clock. So, and then our flight's like an hour and a half, two yes. hours, but we take off from Washington at like 5.30. So be in prayer, all right? We'll talk to you guys later in Washington. All right, bye. We got stuck in Toronto. We are leaving the airport or hotel. We're going to the airport. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be another long day. See you guys later. Alright, hey everybody, we're on the plane. I'm sitting in the back. I got a lovely co partner there, and we got a couple people back here. Wave everybody. See, they're waving. And then you've got Nick and Kathy right there. And then, like, seven rows ahead of us is uh, Pastor Ernie and Christine. And then Jen and Riley have not boarded the plane yet, but they're gonna be going here soon. They'll probably be way back there. So pray for us as we fly. Uh, we thank you so much. And um, hey guys, you know, it's been a blessing to be able to do this, even though everything's not going the way we thought it was going to go. But we're doing it off of what God told us that we were going to do. So it's teaching us patience. So it's been a very awesome trip so far. So uh, we love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. See ya. It is 
016 on Friday, your time. It's like 716 here in Ethiopia. We're at uh, Addis Ababa or something like that. So we literally just landed. Um, so I'm recording this video to say we landed. Um, we still got to go through customs. We still got to do everything. And then our next flight leaves at 755. So I'm hoping we make it. So uh, yeah, we'll talk to you guys soon. Love y'all. Hey y'all, uh, we are on leg 10 of this trip so far. Uh, we just boarded a plane to go to Accra. Everybody's loading right now. We're all super tired, but it's the point of not being on a vacation, but being on a business trip. So keep praying for us. We love you guys. Go ahead. Yeah, that was a great time. We got to go to Ethiopia and talk about providential connections. It was awesome. Church. We're going to speak at our first church today, Pastor Jeff. Yeah, yeah, he's got the woohoos going. Uh, Pastor Jeff's bringing an awesome message today. So we're going to take some cool pictures. It's going to be awesome. But it's day one of the actual message trip, but day four since we left. So thanks, guys, for the prayers. We love you. This is Christine Asher from Africa. I wanted to share my testimony. Um, the very first day that we got here, we had attended a church service. Um, in the past, I've I have received the Holy Spirit. So, um, but I always felt um, reservations about showing the Holy Spirit, you know, speaking in tongues, and I was always afraid of, of making a spectacle of myself, so I suppressed it. I haven't felt that um, Holy Spirit filling in a very long time. So the first worship service that we were attending, um, I kind of just let God take over and just let go. I was actually sitting away from our group in the crowd and I felt the Holy Spirit from head to toe. Um, instant tears start crying um, and the speaking in tongues came back and I haven't felt that way in a very long time. So I stepped out of my little box, my little comfort zone and he had blessed me um, big time. Um, the woman next to me was an African woman and 
from here from Ghana and she was like making sure I was okay <laughs> so the people here are very loving they're very friendly um, they're not sure about us because you know we may look a little different than them but um, I just I just feel that God at that moment uh, pressed on my heart to pray for the moms and all the babies that they carried them on their backs so I had once prayer time was 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 up I had put my hands on the babies and on the moms and and I still feel I still am praying for the moms and for the children here um, that they can press through and become um, men and or well men and women of God as they grow up um, in their culture um, so that's my testimony and I love this experience we've had so many different um, encounters with um, the children and um, it's just an awesome feeling to be able to come over here and help and to give these people a little bit of hope and um, show some love to them that they may not have known would come from all the way across the world. <laughs> so that's my testimony. So today I want to take you to a corner of scripture and then I put up a little flat that needs a little explanation. Now, I'm too, I can't be the one. And that will all be in the same place. Now, I don't know what I missed and don't tell you. The book is Zechariah 12, Zechariah 12, in the sixth verse. You and see on that book. In that day, I will make the governors, now, a stop on of Judah like a fire pan. Now, my little Judah said, in the woodpile. In the woodpile. In the woodpile. In the woodpile. Okay. What is that man that said, in the woodpile? In the Like a fiery torch. So, I have to say, come here, I have to not touch. In the sheaves of grain. Well, yeah, I hear that pastor. And the sixth one, yeah, yeah. And they shall devour. Now, I want to tell you about it. All the surrounding people. Now, I want to tell you about it. On the right hand and on the left. Now, they find a new group. But Jerusalem shall be inhabited. Now, Jerusalem is a very good place. In her own place. I want to tell you about it. I want to tell you about it. If I started telling you that story, that's the man comes out of the city of Chihuahua and didn't explain it, that's the man Chihuahua, you'd wonder why I was telling it. Now, I don't know what I'm saying, but you know what? So let me explain. And to my man, and to them, these people had come out of captivity. Now, some were afraid of performing three or four. They remembered being rich. Now, now they were poor. Now, I'm not aware of the first they said they're aware of nothing. They remembered being strong. Now, I'm not aware of the first, but now they were weak. Now, I'm not aware of the first they said they're not aware of the first. They remembered being far from God. Now, I'm aware of the first, I'm not aware of the first, I'm not aware of the first. But now they were close to God. Now, I'm not aware of the first, I'm not aware of the first. How many of you have ever felt weak? Now, me put my son in the water, I think I said, why am I there? I have felt like I can't do it. How many of you have ever felt poor? Me put my son in the water, I said, I'm going to live in your bed. That's right. How many of you have ever felt far from God? I mean, me put my son in the water, I know who was saying, no, I went to you, see. If you understand any of those things, that's what the son of the son would be a sin. Then you understand these people. Now you want to sound before we must see you. Now we'll make sense of the story. Now I feel yeah yeah. And my and my son, I want to say and I say and I say. How many of you have ever played with fire? You might not say that. I think we're just having a good time. Sometimes we use fire wisely. 
Yesterday we were at the church, we spoke, we had a really good service. Last night we had good food, and we had some good time of fellowship. This morning we started off with a devotional by Pastor Anthony, but today we're actually going to spend all day at this site. So what you're seeing behind me right now is a school that we are going to be helping to build. Now, obviously we're not going to get it done this week, but this is where our job site is. So as we continue to go through this, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for being with us and supporting us because if it's not for you guys praying to God and God blessing us, we wouldn't be able to continue doing what we're doing. So we're really looking forward to actually being a blessing and not what God can do for us, but what we can do for Him. So we thank you for everything you're doing and we'll see you guys soon. Hey everybody, it's me and Christine walking around. The rest of the team went looking around. We're about to go look at it right now. We were trying to get our cameras set up. Um, but be in prayer for our technology. Um, I know it's a mission trip and technology is not that important, but we'd like to document everything for you guys and for us as we continue to do this. So um, one of our cameras just basically stopped working. So uh, from now, we're gonna be, yeah, we got that one and we got our cell phones. So, I mean, thank you Apple for cell phones. So, uh, but we thanks guys and um, yeah, let's go look at this school. So here we are at the schools. Now they are still laying concrete. So some of the classrooms we can't go in. I heard Pastor Jeff talking about it. We're gonna go walk into this classroom. So this is basically the classroom, that's it. So it's small. Uh, it's probably about 400 square feet. Say hi, Christine. But you can see they still laid concrete right here. So we can't really walk in here and everything like that. There's all other clouds there. Then Kathy, our mantra for today. Woohoo! Kathy's saying woohoo. And then you got Jen and Riley. Say good morning, ladies. Good morning. And then we have one of our guys. What's your name? Aziz. Uh, Aziz? Nice to meet you, Aziz. And then you got Ernie. Ernie. <laughs> Say hi, Ernie. Good morning, Aziz. And then there's Nick. And Pastor Jeff, and we have another one of our workers. What's your name? Ben. 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 ben? Nice to meet you, Ben. You guys are doing good work. And then I'm just gonna put in here. Here's another classroom. And look, he's doing all this concrete work. And By hand. Are good. By hand. Let's go walk around. And then don't step in. We're not gonna step into the classrooms, but however, so that's like. Homemade, like gravel sort uh, sifting uh, tray. We got some windows, they're gonna be putting windows up, power and stuff like that. But Anthony says they have about 20 acres. So, and then in per the school regulations, they have to have so many classrooms ready to go before they can open the schools. So you're coming in here. This looks like it's gonna be a bathroom. Man, there's a lot of stalls. This is going to be kind of cool. These are very secure stalls. <laughs> no. Yeah. Good thing they don't have earthquakes. Because if they had earthquakes, this would be a very scary building to be in. <laughs> per I my... Don't be in this stall. Now, I just want to show you this. Somebody made a spear. Yeah. So we're going to probably give that to Nick so he can play with something sharp. I'm just kidding. 
another bathroom over here. Yep, that's another bathroom. And then let's look back here. Now, what's cool about this is on the back of the school, they literally have corn stalks. And on the front of the school, they have corn stalks. And there is a homemade scarecrow. I barely see it. It's not even a scarecrow. But, and Nick's head is blocking my camera view. Thank you, Nick. You're good, brother. And then here's our weather. It's cloudy. It's overcast. And yeah, kind of like Michigan. And there was a lizard. I hope you, I hope I caught that lizard on the on the camera. So, and then a really yeah. close up of Ernie Nolan. Oh. <laughs> so, and then we'll go continue walking. So we're at site number two. What are we building? What do they say? Did they tell you what we're building? Okay. No, this, this is the bungalows. bungalows. These are the bungalows. Right. So uh, I don't know how much we're actually going to be here, but um, this is going to be more of like laying bricks and building the foundation. Yeah. So excited? I am excited. Not about I kind of put her. Video. I kind of put her but on I'm the spot. So her. this is awesome. Let's go. Say good morning, Riley. Okay, go ahead. So these are the bungalows that the, the teachers and the volunteers will be staying. We have about 20 acres of land that we So we'll be building a lot of this. Job site number two, moving bricks. Uh, only here for a couple hours, and tonight we got the pastoral leadership, so uh, we'll talk later. Love you guys. To the words and the stories. 
That he put people's hearts to write the Bible. We know that he sent his son Jesus. God in man. To perform great miracles. Like in John. This is the first miracle that Jesus performed. How many of you are following God's call as a deacon? The one who was an elder, but a friend, as an elder, said, and what you are doing, said, as a pastor, as a pastor, said, as a pastor. We are always turning together. They now are not pastor apostles. Some of us have churches with many people. Some of us have churches with many people. Some of us have small churches. Different places. They won't be different buildings. Different communities. How many of you know all of these churches? They are not ours. And then, and then, so. We are caretakers or stewards. Yeah. Hey guys, so today is day number three of job sites. Last night was an awesome day with the pastoral leadership conference. Uh, Pastor Jeff and I both spoke, Anthony spoke, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, today we're going to be digging the trenches, moving that big old uh, pile of dirt that's right behind Pastor. So, um, and then we'll have the day two of the crusade, so we'll see you guys later. Okay, Kathy. <laughs> Digging trenches. Mango. Mango. This one. Yeah. Is that a mango? Yeah, this yeah. mango. This mango. Okay. Maybe maybe they came last year to mention. But I got me. Wanting to sit over here. But they're scared. So we ask them to come and throw the fear behind them. Because Jesus is here. If you say yes to Christ, So I want to say thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here. It is truly a blessing to us. Some of you know Jesus, but there's still people who don't. So this question goes to everybody though. Has anyone ever told you about Jesus and his powers how strong he is and you feel that you are not worthy? If that's you I got a couple stories that will hopefully change your mind. I'd like to start off with Manasseh. He was the son of Hezekiah. 
in 2 Chronicles 33, it tells his story. This is a man at the age of 12 who became a king. Now, he didn't do good things. He lived a life that was totally against God. He built altars in Jesus' temple. He built altars to false gods. He even sacrificed his son. He practiced witchcraft. He practiced sorcery. He was literally the worst king of Judah. He took his kingdom from here to the worst ever. He did so much evil that God got mad. So he sent the Babylonians to capture him. Picture this. You've done so much bad stuff that when the police come to arrest you, they put shackles on your hands that are attached to a hook that goes in your nose and then drag you away. That would hurt. I'd like to tell you about Saul. Saul was a man chasing Christians that were living the life of Christ but Saul thought they weren't living the life of God. Saul thought he saw everything the right way. And that he knew everything the right way. Saul thought that he was doing God's work. But God said no. So Saul was walking to Damascus with two friends. And the Holy Spirit came upon him. Saul fell to the ground and heard the voice of the Lord. And it was Jesus asking Saul why he was forsaking him. And Jesus punished Saul by making him blind. Peter Peter walked with Jesus through every single one of the ministries and miracles that Jesus did. He even walked on water. And yet he still denied Christ three times before Christ died. So why am I telling you all of these stories? Because God says if you say, rather say that he can change all things. Let me say that again. God says say that he or no can change all things. So let me show you how. When the Messiah 
when Manasseh was captured and tortured, he got on his knees and humbled himself before God. It brought so much joy to God that God had the Babylonians release him and let Manasseh go home. Now, my Manasseh, and when he went home, now, coffee, no. he raised a kingdom for God. Saul went to Damascus. Saul and so called Damascus. He sat in a room for three days What's on his knees, what? blind, praying. And after three days, he repented. And scales fall off his eyes. And the rest of his life, he went out to live for God. He changed his name to Paul. And he even wrote half of the New Testament. Peter went from Peter went from the realization of his shame and failure to understanding God's love and Peter's place in that love. Now Peter was he became a leader in a church. Confident and secure. They called him the rock. Did you notice that God helped each and every one of them when they were most in need? He can help you when you're in your need. So what are your needs? What do you need to have Christ help you with? In your life. Are you struggling today? Are you struggling with anything that God can help you with? Are you struggling with your marriage? Are you struggling with your money? Are you struggling with your faith? Are you struggling with drugs and alcohol? Like I said before, God can change all things. So I'd like to make myself vulnerable. And I'd like to share something with you that not many people know. I'd like to tell you my testimony. I struggled with drugs. Like lots of them. I struggled with alcohol. A lot of it. I struggled with depression and anxiety. I struggled with fear. I struggled with my self-worth. I was alone. I was homeless. I lived under a bridge. I was not happy. So one day I woke up. I looked at my image in a mirror. And I was disgusted with what I saw in me. I had heard of a man called God. But because of my past, 
There's no way he could love me. But like I said before, God can change all things. So one day, I decided to make the ultimate sacrifice. I decided to kill myself. So I went out and bought drugs and alcohol like a lot of it and take it all at one time. I slept for three days. I woke up and I had energy. But I felt like a failure. So I went to my room and I grabbed a gun and I put it in my mouth and I pulled the trigger and no gunshot. I know this gun works but no gunshot. So I felt more depressed. So I went and grabbed another gun that I had just gone to the shooting range with and shot a lot of rounds with. So I know this one works. So I loaded it. I pulled the hammer back. I put it to my temple and I pulled the trigger. The gun went off. And I'm sitting in my room. I can smell the gunpowder. Am I in hell? So I opened my eyes. I realized I was still in my room. And I went, that's not right. So I felt my temple to see if there was any blood or a hole. There was nothing. So I looked up at the ceiling in case I pulled my head away. There was nothing in the ceiling. I got depressed. And my shoulders slumped. I dropped my hand with the gun in it. And I heard something fall on the ground. When I looked down, I saw the bullet. I saw the bullet. I put the gun down. I bent over and picked up the gun. Or the bullet. The bullet impacted something. But it wasn't me. It was God who stopped the bullet for me. God saved my life. God showed me a path so that I could be here. I went to school. I got married. And I'm on my mission trip here with you. Talking to you about Jesus. God wants to work in your life. Right now. Right now. If you are struggling, give it to God. Right now. If you are struggling, Give it to God right now. He wants to hear it. He sees this 
He wants to hear you. So if you're struggling, give it to God. Right now. If you want to see God move in your life, raise your hand. I put both of mine up. Guess what? God wants you to. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I think you guys can be louder than that. I think they can be louder than that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Kathy, share with us what we're doing. So we are sorting the dresses by size. So we're just comparing them to see which sizes match, and then we're going to split them all up into two different groups because we're going to two schools. Where's our woohoo? Woohoo! <laughs> the dresses that Dress a Girl made. Thank you, Dress a Girl. Uh, super excited.
something I'm so tired of talking about how we all got hands and feet But it's easier to say than to be Live like angels of apathy We tell ourselves It's alright, somebody else will do something Riley, what do you think about that last stop we were just at? Pretty cool. Yeah? Yeah. Has this been your favorite part of the trip so far? Yes. Would you change any of it? What is no. Well, I think I would change getting out passing more. More people? Yeah. So, Riley enjoyed giving out the dresses. This next stop, we have another 232 dresses, 33 dresses. Um, but we also have a couple dresses that were... Uh, Sent one sent from my mom in California, but one made by Riley. So um, it's gonna be kind of cool that Riley gets to pass out a dress that she personally made to someone. So, um, but yeah, we'll hit you guys up later. Okay, we're here at school number two and handing out these dresses to all these beautiful children. So this is it. Woohoo! <laughs> So we are done at uh, job site number one. Uh, this is where the future school is going to be built. And we're getting ready to go over to job site number two. Um, we're pretty much done. Um, 
I don't think we, we pass out dresses today. Uh, we don't have anything really going on the rest of the day. We're sightseeing. Tomorrow, Anthony's going to take us to the farm and go show us the farm. Uh, Sunday, we're both speaking at different churches. Yes, we are. Um, just, it's amazing to be here and see what God's really doing um, in Ghana. So, uh, Ernie's in the back. Say hi, Ernie. Hello, everybody. You got anything to say? It's a great day. I amen to that. It's it hot. It is. It's a hot day. Yes, for sure. So we'll see you guys soon. Love you guys. Good morning. We are here at Brother Anthony's ranch that's used for raising cattle and sheep and goats and chickens and turkeys for providing for food for his uh, school. And it's a very nice ranch, and it's way out in somewhere in Africa. I'm not <laughs> sure exactly where, but it's a beautiful place. Okay, go ahead. Woohoo! <laughs> Strong enough, strong
dreams. Amen. This morning is a wonderful day. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that we're in this place today. We ask that you bless this church. That you bless its leaders. Now let's mention every also. That you have blessed prophets. So let's now pray for. Bless and heal bishop. Now let's say I papa. That we would understand the word you have for us. Say about this in some of our my and pray. That in it we would find joy. Now let's do not you bring a new tear. And that you would open your power to us. Now for what you want to be no I want to so my. In the mighty name of Jesus. I will just kiss you to you. Amen. 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 Scripture says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. What does it mean to believe? I don't know mean simply to agree it is deeper than that when Jesus tells us to believe he tells us to follow his example to do what we see him doing to speak the words that he is speaking to obey him. Belief is deep. How many of you have ever fought a mighty battle? How many of you have ever fought a mighty battle? Maybe not so much physically. Have you fought fear? Have you fought pain? Have you felt sad? Have you faced poverty? You have fought a battle. And most battles are difficult. But I want to tell you about a battle that we all face. It doesn't matter if you live in Ghana or the United States. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how what food you eat. Or the clothes that you wear. So we face this battle as very young children. We face it with our parents. We face it in our school. We face it in our homes. We fight this battle when we work. Sometimes every human being can even fight it in church. We can fight this battle in church. The battle we face is fighting authority. We love it when authority gives us what we want. But as soon as authority tells us we can't do, what we want to do, when we want to do it, then we start to fight. How many of you have ever fought authority in your heart? Fought authority in your heart. 
I have. Maybe my first hour how do you come on my woman? It's like a tiny whisper in your ear that tells us to do what we want rather than what God wants. Have you ever fought something you shouldn't fight? Something you cannot win? Something that if you win, you'll lose a blessing? Some fights we should not have. We should not fight something. So here in John 14, 1, Jesus tells us to obey. To follow him. How many of us know we should follow him whether he does anything for us or not? As God, he has a right to be obeyed. But he does give us a promise. In verse 2 it says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you and receive you to myself that where I am, you may be also. Amen. Amen. If you could go back and relive one day of your life all over again and unmake the mistake that left you a million. So for me, being my first mission trip here, this was it started off kind of like off. Um, really was didn't feel any like I was getting anything out of it. Um, but probably going out and doing the dresses was pretty cool. Um, speaking at the Crusades, I've never done that before. Um, I've never spoken to that many people um, in a church setting as uh, aspect. Um, so that was actually really powerful and really moving for me. Um, but I think one of the coolest things that we actually got to do on this trip was to go out to a park where we saw kids playing soccer. We just wanted to go watch a soccer game and to be out there and have the opportunity to talk to kids. Uh, some people got to play the drums, some got to, I watched them make food, um, but being able to, to see everything they're doing, um, to be part of that was actually really powerful. Um, and then today's service to go to a church and actually be the guest pastor, uh, speaking at the church was really cool. So, um, but yeah, this was a really fun trip. Long track, but what if I told you? Hey guys, uh, today is like day almost the end. We uh, we left the hotel. We we're on our way to Kamasi Airport to fly to uh, Accra, uh, and then we leave Accra tomorrow. So, you ready to go home? Yeah, it's been a great trip, but I'm ready to go home. Yeah, I'm ready to go home too. I want to go see. Uh, See the Michigan roads because uh, they're a little bit nicer than what we've been riding on for the last couple hours. So uh, we'll see you guys. To keep it running down the road, you're on. Love's never met a lost cause. Your shame will lay it down. Leave your ghosts in the past because you know that you can't go back, but you can turn around. You've never been more than one step away from surrender. One step away from.
games. Come now and take up your new name. Your best life up ahead now. You one step away. Lay down, lay down your old chains. Come now and take up your new name. Your best life up ahead now. You one step away. Lay down, lay down your old chains. Come now and take up your new name. Your best life up ahead now. You one step away.